How's it going, everyone? My name is Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily Podcast, the number one Raiders podcast in the world. That's right, the number one podcast for your Oakland Raiders in the world. Let's get right to it. We are going to recap the last game, the last preseason game for the Raiders, week three. We got one more to go. This was another ugly game. The Raiders win the game 13-6, but wow. Both teams, by the way, play terrible. But at least, at least the uh, the Green Bay Packers, they didn't play any starters on offense. But they're ba- both, they're bad. I mean, they both play bad, both teams. But who cares about the Packers? We're not here to talk about the Packers. We're here to talk about the Raiders. And the Raiders' backups are absolutely awful. Especially the offensive line. They are terrible. And the quarterback situation. We gotta talk about it, people. It's a disaster. There's no other way to spin it. It is a complete disaster. Connor Cook, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what this guy is doing out there. It's like he doesn't know how to play quarterback anymore. And what happened to EJ Manuel? He doesn't do much. He just doesn't. He just does not do much anymore. And like stats can be so deceiving. He was 8 for 12. EJ Manuel went 8 for 12 for 87 yards. But I mean, he's just, he's so inaccurate. And so is Connor Cook. They just both are terrible. They really are. I mean, Connor Cook was a lot worse than it. Uh, I mean, a lot worse. He was just terrible. Connor Cook went 6 for 15. He had a quarterback rating of 27.6. Think about that. And he threw an interception, of course. He was absolutely garbage. Derek Carr was only out there for a little bit. He went 2 for 3 for 68 yards. You know, he did... Okay, but John Gruden yanked him out of the game real quick because John Gruden got nervous. He saw that offensive line. He saw Donald Penn over there on the right side struggling, huffing and puffing like I said he would be doing. Too old to be playing right tackle. He is a liability. The Raiders got to fix that right side of that offensive line. And I'm still not comfortable with Colton Miller at left tackle. I'm still not sold on that. Want to know what else I'm not sold on? I'll tell you something else I'm not sold on. Doug Martin over Chris Warren. I don't like it. I really don't. We've been hearing all offseason, right? All offseason. How Doug Martin, he's back. He has speed again. He has quickness again. What did he do last night? He didn't do anything that great. He really didn't. I mean, I didn't see a guy that looked like the same Doug Martin of, I don't know, six years ago, whenever the hell he was good. Chris Warren is the future. By the way, Chris Warren didn't get to run. He he has to run behind the worst offensive line, a bunch of backups, Doug Martin gets to run with the first unit. So that's already an advantage for Doug Martin. It's, it's, if you think about it, it's even more amazing that Chris Warren can get 15 carries for 54 yards and a touchdown with that offensive line. Those guys didn't know how to block anyone. Yet Chris Warren, all he does is make plays, yet John Gruden is not sold on Chris Warren. He is not sold on him. Rich Gannon said it last night in the commentary booth. He said it plain as day. He doesn't know if Chris Warren's going to make this team because John Gruden keeps saying 
that Chris Warren is not a complete NFL back. He lacks in pass protection. I say, you know what? Screw it. You have Keith Smith. You gotta put Chris Warren on the field. This guy's gonna be a future superstar. I'm telling you guys, this guy is going to be a good player. He really is. But the Raiders, you know, their first unit when they went out there, like I said, other than the right tackle situation, which does scare me, they look good. Like I told you guys would happen, Derek Carr is going to throw a couple big bombs. Uh, he ended up throwing one to Amari Cooper. It's good to see Amari Cooper catching that pass. Um, so the first unit, they're going to be fine. The Raiders are going to be a really good team, I think. I really do. If the offensive line can hold up and Derek Carr does not get hurt, I think the Raiders will be really, really good. I do. Not like undefeated good, but I think good enough to win the division. Now, from what I understand, their roster in John Gruden's mind and the coach's mind is already 99% done. They know who's making the roster. They know who's making the final 53. Now, you know, the way I look at it, you got the offensive line. Well, first, I mean, let's just break it down. You got three quarterbacks. They're probably all going to make the team, I'm thinking. If they only carry one, let's say they only carry one. You got Marshawn Lynch, Doug Martin, uh, Jalen Richard. And DeAndre Washington, hopefully not. Hopefully it's Chris Warren. Then at fullback, of course, you got Keith Smith, wide receiver. You got Amari Cooper. You got Jordy Nelson. You got Griff Whalen, who right now is the third wide receiver. You got Martavius Bryant. This guy's got to start showing up, though. Uh, and you got... Ryan Switzer, we'll see what happens with Seth Roberts, by the way. That's going to be interesting. He played pretty much the whole game. A lot of people think it's because, oh, he hasn't had uh, a lot of reps. That's not why, people. That's not why at all. The reason why he played the whole game is, is, is because the Raiders are still, still, I say still because they tried during the draft, they are trying to trade Seth Roberts. They want to trade him. They tried during the draft. They could not get any anything for him. They're still trying to trade him. But, unfortunately, Connor Cook could not throw the ball to the guy. So he couldn't show off much. But if they can't trade him, they're going to keep him. So you put Seth Roberts on the roster. Uh, Marcel Aitman, I think, may eke it out. So that would be your wide receivers right there. Then you got the tight ends, obviously Cook, Lee, and Carrier. Then the offensive line, you got Colton Miller, you got Clutchio Simile, you got Rodney Hudson, you got Gabe Jackson, you got Donald Penn, you got Parker, and you got Sharp. I think those are the guys that make it when it's all said and done for your final 53. Um, defensive line, we'll see. Actually, there could be another guy who makes it on the offensive line. Maybe Ian Silberman makes it. I don't know. Uh, this isn't going to be exact 53. Maybe like, I might go one or two over. Like I said, the Raiders don't even know. They're at 99%. Defense line, Kyle Mack, Bruce Irvin, uh, Arden Key, Maurice Hurst. Um, let's see, uh, Hall, PJ Hall obviously is going to make it. Tank Carradine's going to make it just because he's promised all that money. It's already guaranteed to him. Uh, Fidel Brown, perhaps. Calhoun, I think, could make it. And obviously, Justin Ellis. Now, one guy I'm leaving out there is Mario Edwards Jr. The reason why is Mario Edwards Jr. was playing late into that preseason game. And he's another guy the Raiders were shopping in the draft. But they couldn't get anything for him. But if they cut Mario Edwards Jr., they save a million dollars. Now, it's no secret, Mario Edwards Jr. is not going to be a starter on this team. He's not. The Raiders like their rookies. They like Maurice Hurst. They like P.J. Hall. They like Justin, and they like Justin Ellis. Obviously, 
Irvin, and Mac. Those are the key guys. So, I mean, you can go with those guys. Why are you going to pay Mario Edwards Jr. a million dollars when you got all those cheap rookies? So I would watch out for that one, guys. Watch out. The Raiders could cut Mario Edwards Jr. Not saying they're going to. I'm saying it's a possibility. And then when you look at the linebackers, Markwell Lee, Derek Johnson, they're both competing for the middle linebacker spot. But I think they both make the team anyways. To hear Whitehead, of course. Um, and I think Lamar and uh, Wilbler will make it just because of special teams and they gave him a stupid contract. Um, and then uh, maybe maybe you throw James Kowser in there. Maybe he does make the final 53. I think there might be a, might be a, a chance of that happening. Uh, cornerbacks. You got Gary Ann Conley, Rashawn Melvin, Daryl Worley, Nick Nelson, uh, Leon Hall, and Rogers Camardi. That's your cornerbacks right there. I don't think Dexter McDonald's making it. I think that's that's it right there. That that's the only ones I could see making this team right now. And then of course safeties. Um, Carl Joseph. Carl Joseph, by the way. People keep saying um saying something else, but I'm saying his name is Carl, and his last name is Joseph. In case you don't know, sometimes I will put an S at the end of what I'm saying. The reason why, for you trolls out there, is because I'm deaf. That's why. I don't even hear my own voice right now. So anyways, uh, dummies. I don't know how you can't tell, but who cares? Uh, by the way, I just want to say something. I'm deaf, but I, I can hear stuff. You know, obviously. I'm not completely deaf. I have 20... 29, 30% hearing. I'm good. I can hear just like you can in my own mind. Um, anyways, uh, safeties. Joseph, like I said, Reggie Nelson, Gilchrist is starting. Um, and Eric Harris. And that looks like all of them that's going to make it, right? I don't see anyone else. I Leon Hall, I think, yeah, Leon Hall will make it, but I, you know, we're putting uh, Leon Hall with the cornerback, so, um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we got him with the cornerbacks. Okay, and then, of course, obviously, you got uh, the kickers. You know, you already know who the kickers are going to be, and the long snapper, DiPaolo. So, if you don't know who the kickers are, it's Eddie Panero, who, by the way, is still injured. Uh, Nugent had a kick for him against Green Bay. Uh, he he did okay. He missed the kick, but he I don't know. He did all right, but hopefully Eddie Panero, if I'm saying his name right, ends up being okay. Um, but Nugent didn't do bad. I think if the Raiders had to go at Nugent, I think they would be okay. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, and of course the punters Townsend, like I said. So that's pretty much about 52 players right there. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, they're only about one spot away. That's why I'm saying, could Chris Warren make this team? Possibly. But I just named you like 52 players. So there is room for another guy. There definitely is room for another guy. And um, about the game, like I said, uh, Chris Warren to me stood out. Um, Paul Butler on... I did like him in the first couple of games, but he didn't do anything really in this game. But he had bad quarterbacks throwing to him. Dwayne Harris uh, is a guy who I think he's going to get cut. A lot of guys I think might get cut. But uh, Keon Hatcher, even though he did have two targets, um, or two catches I should say. Um, He had five targets, uh, but he only got two catches. He had 34 yards. I still don't think he's making this team. He's going to be cut. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's about it. And, of course, you got your practice squad. Uh, Jason Kambinda, I think, will be on there. I think Azim Victor will be on the practice squad. Uh, Calhoun could just make the practice squad. Who knows? Uh, maybe he doesn't make the active roster. Maybe they put him back on the practice squad. 
But I think Shalik Calhoun, I know he's been playing these games late. I understand that. But he's having a great preseason. We all got to admit that. He's having a very, very good preseason. So he's doing well. Um, Nicholas Morrow has not had the greatest preseason. He just hasn't. Uh, Last night was probably his best performance, I would say. Uh, But I don't know if that's going to be good enough. I really don't. I don't know if I see him making the team. I mean, I guess they could put on a practice squad, but I don't know. And I had high hopes. I really did. I had high hopes for this guy. Um, Fadal Brown, like I said, I think he's been playing very well. So I think he's going to, he has a good chance of making the team. Uh, uh, So just, I'm just going to throw out some guys that are not making a team. Uh, Dalian uh, Levitt, uh, I doubt it. Um, Quincy Mauger, I don't see him making it. Uh, there, I mean, all these guys, you probably already know, not making it. Shakir Soto, I don't think's making it. Uh, Rayshon Pringle, I don't think is making the team. Uh, so yeah, all those guys, and like I said, Keon Hatcher, the backup fullback, he might get put on the practice squad. And that's about the best he'll be able to do, in my opinion. Uh, and let me see, Paul Butler, he's not making a team, Dwayne Harris, like I said, I don't see him making a team, and that's about it, Marcel Aitman, that's going to be an interesting decision right there, he either goes to practice squad, or he makes the active roster, when the Raiders are at 99%, those are the guys, you know, like I said, I believe there's about four spots or whatever, they'll determine I think that's one they're looking at. I really do. But they're fine at wide receiver either way. When you got Jordy Nelson, Amari Cooper, and if Martavius Bryant can just be consistent in practice and all those things and not get on John Gruden's bad side, like he, he'll be fine, in my opinion. He'll be just, just fine. And if the Raiders can run the ball, that's going to be the biggest key this year. If Marshawn Lynch can be beast mode and he can run the ball like he did a second half of last season, if he doesn't, we know he's going to be a good teammate. Last year when he came in, things didn't go well. It seemed like he didn't care that much. Halfway through the season, I think he got a little bit humbled. And he's still carrying that with him. Like he has something to prove. And that's a good thing. Maybe Doug Martin will surprise me. Maybe. But I still say Chris Warren should be over Doug Martin. I like Jalen Richard catching the ball in the backfield. I really do. I don't like him returning punts. I re- if he's not returning punts, I'm fine with that. Because last season, every time he returned a punt, I had to hold my breath because I thought he was going to muff it. And sometimes he did. So... Ryan Switzer can do that. That's where Ryan Switzer is going to fit in on this team. Uh, And yeah, that's about it for the game. Like I said, the game was just a nightmare. Connor Cook sucks. Connor Cook and EJ Manuel might be the worst backup quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, I know the Packers didn't look too well. They didn't look too great last night. Uh, You know, they weren't very good. Brett Hundley went 8 for 14 for 78 yards. Uh, But, you know, I would still take Brett Hundley over E.J. Manuel or Connor Cook. Deshaun Kaiser went 11 for 23. I mean, he didn't... I would take him over E.J. Manuel or Connor Cook. That's the problem. We just watched a team last season in the Philadelphia Eagles... Lose their starting quarterback. Their starting quarterback. He was the the MVP of the season, the regular season. They lose that guy, and their backup quarterback wins them a Super Bowl. That's how important backup quarterbacks are. Connor Cook, he looked great at Michigan State. What happened to that Connor Cook? What happened to that guy? Because the guy I watched last night, the guy I watched three times, I watched this game three 
times in a row. Not in a row. I just lied. But I watched this game three times. This preseason game. And the last preseason game. Connor Cook just, he's not seeing the field. The Raiders got to do something. Because both of these guys couldn't make it in the Canadian Football League right now. They are regressing, not progressing. Now, listen, John Gruden's supposed to be a quarterback guru. So why are these guys regressing? Some of that blame has to go on John Gruden. I know a lot of Raider fans don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. What? Why else are these guys regressing? Now, I know Connor Cook was no superstar last year, obviously. But now he has John Gruden. I expected Connor Cook to be better. Now, there is one, one area where I could see John Gruden is having influence with E.J. Manuel and Connor Cook. They both, both of them, used their legs last night. Connor Cook did it, so did E.J. Manuel. They took advantage of when no one was open and they had a lane, they ran. That's what Rich Gannon did under John Gruden. That's what pretty much all quarterbacks did under John Gruden. That's what Derek Carr is going to be asked to do this season under John Gruden. Something I've been saying Derek Carr should have been already doing. Last year and the year before, I used to get so mad watching Derek Carr play. He would have no one open, but he would have a huge lane in front of him where he could run like 20 yards, yet he would just throw it away. On a third down, on a third down, it would be third and seven, and Derek Carr could run 18 yards. Instead, he threw the ball away. That used to drive me nuts. That's not going to happen anymore. Not under John Gruden. But, but, you can't get the guy injured because if you get him injured, your season is over. Your season is over. The Raiders got to bring in another quarterback. They got to cut EJ Manuel or, or Connor Cook, one of them. I don't care who it is. I really don't. They got to bring in another quarterback, though. If they don't, one of those guys got to get better. Connor Cook. Had a 27.6 quarterback rating. I mean, you can't get worse than that. He's awful. Get a new quarterback. And don't let Chris Warren go. But anyways, that's our recap of the game. Like I said, the Raiders won the game. Uh, Very ugly game. Hard to watch. But we got through it. We got one more preseason game to go. And then we get on to the regular season. The Raiders versus the Rams. We're going to know how good this Oakland Raiders team is. Week one against the LA Rams. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. My name is Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app free for iOS and Android.